guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alex from the blog and YouTube page, Alexandria Paris. I'm here to do another Tesla video for you guys today. I'm one of the first Model Y owners within a cool temperature zone, and I think everybody's been waiting to see just how well the Model Y will perform in these cooler temperatures. And sadly, I have ended up with a model that is not performing well at all in these cold temperatures. For starters, on the Tesla app, the climate control button is not really connecting that well. Most days, my Tesla app won't even connect to my car itself, so I can't actually turn on that preheat climate control setting. Um, so there have been days where I had to walk down from my office building, walk out to my car in the parking lot, manually turn it on, connect it into the app, and then go back in while it warms up for a 20 minute period or so. We which I was not expecting when you purchase a luxury vehicle you kind of hope that everything's going to be working perfectly right off the bat from the touch of a button your car is going to be warming up for you while you're still sitting at work I do understand however as an early adopter of an innovative new product there are going to be glitches there are going to be small bumps in the road um, so I do acknowledge that it's just with this initial cold shock that we've experienced for a Canadian winter this is something that makes my experience with the car are quite unsatisfactory. It's just one of the issues I've run into um, while driving my Tesla in the winter. The second and most important issue I have been experiencing even when my phone can connect to the climate control and I'm able to preheat my Tesla from the comfort of my home or from my office, I have been noticing that the heat does not always turn on. So if you're in a warmer climate where you don't usually use the heat, your Tesla may be doing this and you don't even realize it. Um, again, where I live somewhere where it is so cold, it is shocking when cold air is blowing out on you when you do have the heat on high. Um, and again, this is something where if you live in a warmer climate, it might not be that big of a deal. For me, it's not even an uncomfortable thing. We we can get temperatures so low like minus 30 on the regular in Calgary where if I was perhaps stranded on the side of the road or if I hit the ditch somewhere or something and my heat wasn't working that literally could be a life or death situation so having the heat irregularly turning off and on is not ideal and it's also very unsafe for the climate that I live in so I have brought this issue up with my local Tesla service center they have told me that this is a common issue with any of the newer Model Ys and apparently it's a firmware problem where the Tesla engineers are working on a solution. I do have a service date booked for early December and I'm really hoping it will be resolved at that time because I cannot see lasting the winter in this vehicle uh, if my heat is simply not working. So our technician at the service center did point out a quick fix um, to try and kickstart the heat back on. I'll show you guys that. I'll also point out a telltale sign to let you know if your heat is not working the way it should be. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is obviously open your climate here. Um, so here is our climate control panel. When I feel the heat, I can feel cold air coming out even though I do know that I do have the heat turned on. One of the ways to tell um, if you're not really sure about the heat just from feeling the air coming out, you can also see from this message here. So generally when you're in park, you can turn on dog mode um, or keep the climate on when you walk away from the vehicle. When your heat is not working, basically you get a little disclaimer here that says climate keeper unavailable due to system fault. This is what I read when I realized that my heat was not working and it wasn't just my auto system trying to keep me at a cool temperature than I wanted. So at the moment, because I do have this message here and when I do feel the air blowing out, I do know that my heat is not working at the moment. So here is the step-by-step -step guide our technician told us to try and kickstart the heat to turn back on. I have noticed this does not work 100% of the time. It really is hit or miss, um, but it's the run through that I always do to try and turn on the heat. So the first button you'll click is the climate control. From there, try turning off the system and then turning it back on again. From there, turn on the auto, turn off the auto, ensure all of the vents are open, try clicking the AC on, try clicking the AC off, 
and then I try turning up the heat a little bit so that I can feel the heat to the touch to make sure if it's working or not. So it is still not working. I'm going to run through all of those things one more time. I'm even going to try turning off and on the air circulation and see if that kick starts it as well. So everything that I've just tried over and over again is not triggering the heat to turn back on again. The next step I'm going to try is doing a soft reset button by holding both scroll wheels on the steering wheel. All right, so we did the soft reset um, and now our screen is back up and running. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off climate. I'll do that where I turn on auto. I'm going to turn off auto, put the AC on. Turn the AC off. Make sure all the vents are open. It's still not working. I can feel from the touch of the air blowing out that it is cold air. And then as I mentioned before, this description is still here where it says climate keeper unavailable due to system fault. It is nice that you cannot turn on dog mode when this isn't working because as I mentioned before, in a really cold climate, if I were to leave my dog in the car, basically the heat's not working at all to even keep the car warm enough to keep my dog warm. Okay, so everything that I just told you to try um, is not working for me. So what we're going to go ahead and do, because sometimes this works for me, is if I park in a parking lot, for instance, and I go into a store and I come back, sometimes the heat starts working when I come back to my car. So we're gonna take our phones um, and we're gonna just leave the car, walk away from it, let it turn off um, and lock the way it would if we were going into a store or something. So what I have done is I have taken the system off auto. I've opened all the vents including the back vent and then I have put the heat to high and then I put the fan speed on four. I feel as though this is kind of generally where I've left it in the past and it'll turn on at that setting. Okay so here we go we're exiting the vehicle and we're gonna see if that solves the problem. Okay so we're standing here looking at our car. It did honk that it locked so we're just gonna give it a minute and then we're gonna walk back to it. Okay, so we're back in the car. Everything has kind of turned on. Uh, the heat settings will turn on to where you last had them set. So both of our heated seats are on and then I do see here the temperatures on high. And there is no heat coming out of the vents and that description is still there saying that there is a system fault. So unfortunately, none of those tips that I just gave you uh, triggered our heat to turn on. Again, that came straight from our Tesla technician. So trying a few of these things sometimes can kickstart the heat to turn back on. As I mentioned, this for me has not been a foolproof way. Sometimes it works to trigger the heat to turn on and other times it does not. I find the easiest way to get the heat to turn on is when I just turn my heat on and I leave it off auto. I don't have the air conditioning on and then I put the fan speed at somewhere at a midpoint as well as opening all of the vents. Um, if I do that and then I walk away from my vehicle and I come back and that is the setting that it turns on at, I generally find that the heat does turn on and if that happens and your heat does turn on, don't touch anything. Like don't adjust the fan speed, don't change which vents are turning off and on, don't even change the temperature. Once you exit and enter the vehicle, I find that the heat will consistently stay on at whatever setting you leave it at. The minute you start tinkering with it, it is not going to work. Um, as well, you cannot turn on the climate from your phone. So if you find a setting where your heat does stay on when you are leaving the vehicle and coming back, I would not try and operate this from your Tesla app. I would not try and preheat your vehicle um, because the minute you touch anything related to the climate control, it kickstarts this whole process and it's not Another round of tinkering until you find the perfect setting where your heat will decide to turn back on.
I just want to reiterate how much I love my Model Y. This has just been one small glitch in being a new Tesla owner. So I do hope that this is remedied quickly and I really hope that not too many of you are experiencing the same issues that I am. I do know that this is just a byproduct of buying something that is on the cutting edge of technology. So fingers crossed that this does get fixed in early December and I can keep on enjoying my Model Y throughout the rest of the winter. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I I hope it solves any of your heating issues or I hope it is a little eye-opening into some of the issues I've run into as a new Tesla owner. I'll be sure to keep tabs on what is working when it does come to the heat system or if I have any breakthroughs in some solutions on how to remedy this issue um, and I will follow up in the comment section below. If you haven't already please like, comment, and share this video. If you have some tips and solutions on things that have helped your heat turn on again please drop it in the comment section below and share with anybody else who is experiencing this issue. Of course, if you haven't already, please check out the rest of my page and hit that subscribe button, as well as check out my blog, www.alexandriaparis.ca. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.